You don't hear much praise for China in the United States these days. To be fair, China doesn't say great things about the U.S. either. <laughs> the two big nations are stuck in a geopolitical deadlock that is bad for progress to fight climate change. I'm a China sustainability policy analyst, and I have witnessed a clean energy revolution there. That could mean big things for the rest of the world, but it's become clear to me that if the U.S. continues to treat China as a threat, the desired transition would never happen at the faster pace and a larger scale as expected. We urgently need to pivot from the currently dismal relations. And reset a constructive rather than destructive foundation for a global clean energy revolution. <laughs> Let's take a look at the clean energy manufacturing, because this seems to be where the tension lies today. Some U.S. commentators said the best chance was 10 years ago. The second best chance is now. The best chance was China's drive to invest aggressively and ambitiously in clean technologies with the China Make 2025 campaign. The outcome is massive de deployment of clean energy solutions that establish China as a global leader in this landscape. The U.S. Inf Inflation Reduction Act in 2022. A climate law that pushes for investment in domestic energy, clean energy production, represents the second best chance. The IEA Executive Director Fatsi vividly called this dynamic the beginning of a new age of clean energy manufacturing. A decade apart, China and the U.S. stand at a different position along the global value chain. While China is already in the second, second decade in transition, the U.S. is just starting to take off. The recent data shows China provided 77 percent of global batteries last year, and is right on track to lead all nations in manufacturing clean energy products by 2030. China's investment has also put it as a global leader, leading exporter of those technologies. Sol, solar, wind, batteries—you name it. My professional experience also tells me that the U.S. can learn a great deal from China's steadfast dedication to push forward the clean energy transition in some key ways. Firstly, China is re-energizing the world's largest energy system with renewables and a smart grid infrastructure, and the U.S. can adapt this with a much shorter learning curve. And reduce the costs. The first half of this year saw 34 percent of China's electricity generated from non-fossil fuels, right on track to deliver 39 percent by 2025, as has been planned, and aiming for 80 percent by 2035. Between now and 2035, China's national endeavors are focused on rapid expansion of. Installations and also consumption of clean energy in all sectors you could imagine. In the meantime, it's also dedicated to enhancing grid trans tra transmission and distribution system to accommodate this growth of renewables. U.S. and China operate power system in two different regulatory contexts, but share the logic and also technicality when designing and building. A clean, smart, and net zero carbon emissions grid system. China is also becoming a real dare daredevil in pioneering the development of 5G and AI-enabled power system, and deploying the high, ultra high voltage grid systems, supplemented by vehicle-to-grid technologies, in order to accommodate the rise of EVs. China's experience can provide an invaluable、uh, reference or insight for the U.S. to decarbonize your own power system. Secondly, China is leading a global campaign to increase solar usage. The social, economic, and environmental model deployed in China can help the U.S. to address climate injustice challenges domestically. 
Solar energy is becoming the least cost option for new electricity generation in most parts of the world today. The IE forecasts an average annual solar generation growth of 25 percent between 2022 and 2030, which is about 10 times of the current total global installations, in order to achieve net zero carbon emissions by mid-century. Or to put it another way, it is one kilowatt solar installation per person by 2030. That number stands today. At a tenth, as a tenth kilowatts globally, China is on its way to achieve two fifths of kilowatts by the end of this year. To bridge the gap, a group of leading Chinese universities and institutions launched a China campaign advocating one kilowatt solar installation per person by 2030. The strategy is really, and also turning that into a global campaign called "Solar Lights of Planet." The strategy is to really use solar installation as an intervention point to explore how rural energy transition in China can benefit other UN sustainability targets. On one side, it's cost-effective. One kilowatt solar installation requires five square meters of space. And $500 upfront investment to install. When completed, it generates green electricity while avoiding carbon emissions. And on the other side, it also demonstrates that co-benefits can be created and maximized. Rapid rural energy transition can bring new investment and also create green power-enabled growth opportunities. For instance. Food, agriculture, fishery, energy services, tourism, and other industries. China's experience、uh, definitely can be very valuable for the U.S. to think about solutions to address climate injustice. Solar lights of planet is the ambition. It also offers colleagues in the United States to work with peers from China and other parts of the world to really tackle. The climate injustice challenge. Thirdly, China is mainstreaming circular economy and transforming its supply chains. Joining forces, China, the U.S., together with the EU, can literally reset the global supply chain, solely on sustainability. China is a global manufacturing powerhouse. Its demand for raw materials and critical metals. Is growing exponentially. As we all know, the planet cannot possibly afford the ecological destruction from quadruple and, in some cases, even six times the current input of critical metals to match the planned energy transition. A circular economy offers a remedy to decouple the growth from resource use. China is also well positioned to re- reset its supply chains with circularity at the core. Today, China recycles more than 95 percent of nickel and lithium. Business communities have a big role to play, providing solutions or answers to what hurdles to remove, what innovative solutions to deploy, what business models actually to promote, and very importantly, how to consolidate the global partnership. To work together to shape up a sustainable and circular global supply chain, which is why a group of Chinese organizations are working together, kicking off a China Circularity 100 initiative, aiming by 2030 to really find the pathways to close the loop in recycling for critical metals and also for the energy sector. Is targeting at least 100 companies to work together to find the alternative pathways. China's practice can become a very important reference for the United States to make investment decisions to embrace the circularity now. So, how do we jumpstart a new U.S.-China partnership? Well, the two governments has already should start with. A revised narrative, one that is with good intention as well as with the collaborative spirit. 
In the meantime, the two nations need to assure the rest of the world that they are really seriously and sincerely working together to find the alternative and the rebuild partnership. One thing to keep in mind: the climate change doesn't care about our ideological divide. Rather, it demands for collective actions that deliver outcomes. Calling on China as a national security threat seems to claim that the U.S. rather than China is the legitimate and trustworthy global leader in this transition. And yet, as the world's largest developed economy, the U.S. doesn't meet the bar of what is expected of a global leader. Along the line, it doesn't provide the rest of the world sufficient, accessible. And affordable clean energy solutions, nor does it provide deliver its financial commitment to other developing countries under the Paris Agreement. And China undoubtedly has to go a long way too in rethinking its strategy and behavior in dealing with the U.S. It needs to make extra efforts to convince the world that it's not a threat, but rather a trusted partner. Willing and capable to work with the U.S. to shift towards a collaborative partnership. Let me leave this stage with some sort of cautious optimism. My heart feels enlightened when media in our two countries start to tell different U.S.-China stories. Treasury Secretary Yellen's China trip last week went viral in Chinese social media. The rainbow welcoming her landing in Beijing Airport represents some hope and also a new beginning of bilateral relations. And her love for the wild mushroom soup from Yunnan Province <laughs> literally gives me this kind of a warm and also sweet human touch. And I have a message、uh, to Climate Envoy John Kerry, who is coming to China later this month. You know, the two governments have already declared quite a number of joint commitments and collective actions to fight climate change. What's urgently needed now is a shared vision, mission, aspiration, wisdom, and very importantly, a compass to guide everyone back on track to take collective actions and deliver the due results. It seems to me. That they must have precondition for us all in order to keep a sustainable future within reach. Thank you.